Okay, hi everybody. I'm Victor Track. Uh, I have a little software company here in Austin called um, CloudKite, um, and this is me. And on the right is some of the companies here in Austin and elsewhere that uh, I've, I've worked at and have built Kubernetes clusters for as part of uh, with with CloudKite. Um, so CloudKite is uh, kind of a DevOps as a service uh, company. Uh, we do pretty much just uh, Docker and Kubernetes and uh, stuff like that. Um, and so uh, let's say you, ha you have a brand new Kubernetes cluster. You have this, this big ship. It's pretty empty. Um, and so uh, I'm assuming we're starting here. You have your ship. And then we're going to take this and see and basically walk through things that I would typically do to kind of, um, you know, uh, on a new cluster. Uh, and all the code is here. Um, so if you want to come back and check it out. And, and, and uh, uh, ideally, at, if you follow through these various steps, you'll see you'll get the same result. Um, so, OK, so kind of the first thing I always like to do is set up an ingress. Uh, so on GKE, you can have that checkbox that we showed at the beginning where you get a Google load balancer as an ingress. Um, I like to use the Nginx ingress because, um, one, it's portable. You know, I can use the same Nginx ingress configuration across AWS. Uh, or um, you know, uh, or any GKE, or any Kubernetes um, cluster, really, um, and uh, and so if you if you look uh, at um, GitHub and the Kubernetes org, there's a project called the Nginx Ingress, um, and so if you get all those resource files, um, you will have an Nginx Ingress. There are a bunch of changes that I like to make to it because I don't actually like their defaults. Um, so one. One of the primary ones is they use a deployment instead of a daemon set. Um, deployments are fine. Just out of the box, you, you know, you don't guarantee that your ingresses aren't all in the same instance or whatever. And you know, I I think for something as important as ingress, you should have like at least one copy in all your your nodes. Um, so if you check out uh, code, get a get a Victor Kubernetes two one. Oops. If you check this up, uh, uh, let's see. Get these. I'm going to assume that what's on GitHub is what we should use. Uh, so if you look at this directory on GitHub, uh, let's see. We can go here. Um, there's this. So um, there's this, this little install bash script that I wrote. Um, so if you kind of walk through it, all it does is it pulls the actual, you know, Kubernetes resource definitions for the, their Nginx ingress, and then we make some uh, patches to it, like we change it from a deployment to a daemon set, um, and then there's like some CloudKite patches that I like to make, uh, which are kind of here. Um, so I, you know, I add a uh, with a daemon set. You can do a rolling deployment. So when you update, typically if you don't have a rolling deployment with a daemon set, you update it. It doesn't do anything until the next time that pod gets killed. So if you add in a rolling deployment definition, you can say that when your deployment updates, or sorry, when your daemon set updates, um, you can, you know, uh, uh, how, how many, how much downtime you have, how many pods roll at the same time, that type of thing. And I also like to enable VTS metrics, which is so that. Um, you know, on a vir uh, uh, virtual host uh, level, Nginx will have a little endpoint where you can scrape with, um, you know, wh whatever your monitoring tool is, like Prometheus or whatever, some sort of exporter. <laughs> um, I increase the read timeout, and then um, a, lo a lot of things I see is um, kind of the back ends will have too big of a response, so the default uh, proxy response size is too small, the buffer is too small, and so uh, you, you kind of lose responses, and so I increase that as well. So then if you look at uh, kind of, uh, let's see. Sorry, this is very interactive. And, and so we're going to assume that um, all this works as well. Um, but if you look at kind of these patches, 99 Cloud Kite Dev, uh, Patch Config Map. Um, so here's where I do that. Um, this is just a patch file that um, I want to be able to um, patch upstream and still be able to kind of um, not have to maintain my own fork. And, the, the, and how I do that uh, is I have this little install script. And I just do download. So then it runs this. And so then if I look here, I've got a bunch of new files. Um, and then if I install GKE, then we apply these patches. And then we enable like the timeout that I'm talking about. 
And then there, there are other specific patches as well that are listed here. Uh, like we turn on RBAC. RBAC's not turned on by default as well on, the, on, on upstream. So um, anyway, uh, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to install this. I'm going to assume that my cluster is up and running now, and it is. Um, I'm going to try Cloud Shell, actually. Feel free to raise your hand and ask questions. I would, you know, this is, um, should be fairly interactive. Have you guys done this before? Yeah? OK. Uh, OK, so uh, I have stuff I'm going to download. I'm going to do it in the Cloud Shell, because I think it's kind of cool. Um, and then install GKE. And so what that does is it goes through each of those things and then uh, uh, and applies them to my cluster. Oh, you know what? I never actually connected. Uh, I'm going to connect, run in Cloud Shell. So it's a brand new cluster, so my Cloud Shell doesn't have my Kubernetes context. So I need to, to do this command, which tells my kubectl running in my Cloud Shell how to connect to the cluster I just created. Uh, so if I do this, and I do uh, install gke, which is, runs that function in uh, my bash script. So the first command is uh, kubectl to create cluster role binding. Um, uh, it makes me an account, a, a, an admin on my cluster. Um, so we do that. And then we're going to make a namespace for the Nginx ingress. And then we're going to make a default backend. So if you don't define uh, a backend, then we're just going to get a default page. Uh, the upstream config map, TCP services config map, this is all straight from upstream stuff. Uh, we're creating our back. Uh, here's the daemon set that uh, I took from upstream, turned from a deployment into a daemon set. Uh, and then um, these are applying the patches that I talked about. Um, and this is all on GitHub, so you can kind of go through in detail if you want to follow through later uh, about how this works. Uh, okay, so right at this point, you should see stuff, oops, spaces, start to create. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is... Cloud shell, it's driving me crazy. Uh, go down. Do you guys still see that? If I make it smaller, too small? OK. No, no worries. Um, crash loop back off. Uh, that's interesting. Let's figure out why. Uh, we, we got one of them running. So I suspect that perhaps I didn't create the RBAC fast enough. So um, probably let's, let's just kill, delete, pi, uh, what is it, ingress. Yep, so they're coming up. Um, it was kind of a timing issue. RBAC wasn't created, and I enabled the RBAC. So then at this point, we have an Nginx ingress. So if I do a cube, get SVC, all namespaces, I'll see a public IP address, because at this point, we uh, Kubernetes told GKE to, uh, to create a uh, load balancer. And so here's our default backend. So we know that we're getting traffic back to our Nginx machines. Um, and so. Any questions there? Good. So next step is um, Helm. Uh, and I, um, so uh, again, if you just look at uh, O2 Helm, I have a little bash script that I wrote that uh, looks like this. And uh, all it does is do these commands in the slide. So first thing is kubectl create Helm. Uh, it's probably too small, right? And so then we're going to create a service account called Tiller in the Helm namespace. And then uh, we're going to bind that service account um, in, uh, that we just created. And then finally, we're going to run Helm init 
uh, we're going to tell it to use this Helm uh, namespace and service account tiller. So there we are. Um, Q get pods and uh, Helm and the namespace is what pods we have here. So we have a tiller deployment. So now I should be able to do Helm ls. Uh, hold on a second. Export tiller namespace Helm. So now I should see nothing, um, which Helm, which means Helm's installed because it didn't give me an error about tiller not existing. Um, so now that I have Helm installed, I can go and uh, I like to install Cert Manager. So Cert Manager uh, uses uh, Let's Encrypt to give you automatic TLS uh, certificates for all of your uh, ingress services. So it's really nice once you set it up because then you never have to worry about your certificates again and, and anything that people deploy, your developers deploy into your cluster, they automatically get SSL certificates. So you can, I mean, it's basically, um, we're going to use Helm now that because we have it installed, we're going to uh, to install uh, Cert Manager. Uh, this is from the Jetstack folks. They do a really good job. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, again, this these bash scripts are just wrapped into this install, so that I can kind of walk through without having to copy and paste. So we're going to do Helm install. We're going to create a new, uh, namespace uh, in Cert Manager, uh, and then we're just going to use Helm's uh, Cert Manager. Anybody not familiar with Helm? Um, so Helm is an open source project hosted on um, uh, by the Kubernetes folks on their org. Oh, geez. Uh, uh, GitHub.com, Kubernetes, Helm. It's kind of like a package management tool for Kubernetes. So if you browse your GitHub uh, repo, um, you can kind of look at things like, um, so this is Helm itself, sorry. Um, uh, let's see, I think it's Helm charts. I don't remember the repo. Uh, Kubernetes charts. Um, so if you look at here, there's directories, and each one of these directories has um, all these other directories, and these are all things that you can install with Helm. So it makes installing basic things with Kubernetes super easy. Um, there are good things about Helm. There's bad things about Helm, but um, like let's uh, let's look at Cert Manager. That's one we're about to install. Uh, so once you have Helm installed, uh, you can just run a simple command like this: Helm install name and just give it a name and then the, the chart. So it goes out to the internet, grabs this, um, uh, you know, these templates, and then there are a couple of things that make up a Helm chart. There's a values file, which are just, it's just some YAML that, you know, um, it actually uses Go's templating system to just kind of render these templates. So if you look at any one of these templates, uh, there's these curly brackets, it looks like mustache bracket, you know, um, that just takes stuff from the values, plugs it in, spits out some hydrated YAML that is valid Kubernetes resource definitions and then applies that to your cluster. So it's really just kind of a templating engine. Um, but it does make um, you know, doing things like this a little bit easier. So, um, uh, 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 so now uh, we have, when I ran that Helm command to install Cert Manager, I can do something like cube, uh, get pods, and Cert Manager. And you can see that uh, now I have this Cert Manager, Cert Manager. Uh, it's got kind of a Helm naming thing, um, but it's running. And so, uh, so Cert Manager has issuers. So it's a, you can have Cert Manager do things like verify that you own a domain using DNS. So if you plug in Route 53 or you, you plug in Google DNS, uh, when somebody creates a, um, a a request to make a TLS certificate. Um, it will make an API call to Let's Encrypt and say, hey, check DNS to make sure, and we can verify that we actually own this, this record. And that's how Let's Encrypt knows that it's not generating a record for like Google.com to you or whatever, right? Um, and then you can also have other issuers like HTTP. So it's like uh, the same thing, but it will make an API call to Let's Encrypt. They're going to make an HTTP call to your endpoint. And because the HTTP call uses the exact same host name that you're trying to get a certificate for, they know it's valid. So there's different types of challenges. And so I'm going to set up um, some HTTP-based challenges. Um, and, and so now, at this point, theoretically, uh, we should be able to, um, when we make a service, we should be able to get a certificate. So this is where things get a little bit more interesting. Um, I was actually trying to do this last night. Um, 
And as with something as fast moving as fast moving as uh, Helm and Kubernetes and everything else, there are bugs all the time. And so a lot of um, you know I'm I'm constantly having to like I'm running into issues when I haven't done things in a while. Um, so for example, there's a there's a new release of Helm from a week ago that uh, apparently causes a bug that breaks pretty much every single um, Helm chart. Uh, that I can find for like Prometheus or Final Learn Manager. I'm pretty sure it breaks the core OS. Uh, there's the core OS has an operator for uh, Prometheus. It didn't work either. And so I was troubleshooting with this quite a bit last night. But I think if I, uh, so I reverted to an older version of, of, um, of Helm. Um, and I think this should work. We'll see. Uh, if not, then you guys can watch me troubleshoot. And that might be something that's interesting as well. Uh, I'm not. Um, So um, again, I, I had this, uh, this this bash script that I wrote that really I just had this function called pause and it just spits back this you know um, this bash and then um, so it's the exact same stuff as in the slides. Uh, 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 oops. Uh, doo -doo -doo. So the first thing we're gonna do is Helm install. We're gonna call it Prometheus. We're gonna uh, make a namespace called monitoring. There's a Prometheus values file, so that's um, if you look at Helm uh, in in uh, here and you go to the charts, uh, Prometheus here. Here's the values file. So the values that comes in the GitHub is just basically all the defaults. So they upstream will you know set like tags, like the versions that you should install. Um, you know, whether it's stateful, like pretty much everything that you can configure an app to do, people have shoved it into a values file. And a lot of this stuff gets turned um, um, by the templates into a config YAML file in the Docker image it's, or container itself when it's running inside Kubernetes. Um, so I'm going to run this with uh, some values files that I hope works. Um, and so I'm going to create an RBAC because I like having RBAC. Um, so theoretically, if I, if I go over here, get pods name monitoring, which is, I'm going to get some stuff, and I do. So I see that I have alert measure coming up. I have these other pods already running. Node exporters are run as a daemon set on every single one of my nodes. So that's all that's doing is it's grabbing all the system level metrics like CPU, memory, that type of thing. And then uh, it's trying to find its Prometheus server. and. It you know, scrapes locally on itself, and then it pushes to the Prometheus server. So you want to have one of these for every uh, instance in your um, Kubernetes cluster. Um, let's see. So if, I bet if I do this now, they're all going to be running. They are. Awesome. Um, so then if I hit Enter again on my install script, the next step is going to install Grafana. Uh, uh, So uh, if I do this again, I should start. I should see maybe a Grafana node, and I do. Um, so as soon as that's running, we might be able to pull up the Grafana UI. Um, so let's try that. So um, as of right now, I have no external ingress into my Grafana instance. So I'm going to use uh, kubectl as a port forward. Um, so I'm going to port forward. I'm going to use it, it lives in a monitoring namespace. So I, I push the dash in there. I'm going to the name of the pod, and I believe Grafana runs on port 3000. Um, so I'm going to do that, and then so now I have uh, my local host is listening on port two. Uh, let's see, local host 3000, and it works. Um, I don't know my password. Let's see admin admin. Hold on a second. Wah wah wah. Uh, let's see here. Oh yeah, I need to run this command because it generated by default when you don't supply a password, it generates a password for you. So if I do this, it, I get this nice secure password. Logged in. Okay, cool. Um, so now here's Prometheus. Uh, sa uh, save and, uh, okay. Well, it's pre-configured in the in the Helm t uh, chart, so I guess I can't change this anymore. And 
to my file monitoring. Oops, no, no, no. Too much, too much tab completion. Uh, okay, so who's used Grafana and Prometheus? Uh, oh, a good many people. So this is the part where I couldn't get working. I think there's a configuration issue in the way that uh, Helm was generating some of the default configs straight from upstream. Um, so uh, let's see. So that's kind of the cool thing about Grafana is that um, you can can get charts from uh, upstream from their website. So um, Grafana dashboards. Um, so you can kind of go to their site, and uh, you know, there's, you know, the community has already built a bunch of these dashboards, which are um, a bunch of JSON files, basically. But let's say I just want to have like basic Kubernetes dashboards. Um, uh, 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 uh. What's that? Oh, that's, yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah you're, you're right. Yeah, because Grafana can actually talk to a bunch of different backends, like you know, relational databases, Influx, from you know, Prometheus, um, and so it's not a a lot of people use Grafana with Prometheus, but um, um, oh yeah, that's awesome! Look at all these databases you can use. Uh, let's see. So let's see, Prometheus and um, Kubernetes. Let's see if we can get a basic Kubernetes dashboard. Uh, uh, this one looks good. So just by this ID, I can go in here, copy ID to dashboard. If I go over here, I can go to, um, uh, how do I do this? Uh, manage. Um, uh, it's been a while since I've seen, oh, import. Just this. And load. Did that work? I don't know if that worked. Is that my timeout? What was that? Oh, okay, cool, thanks. Uh, that's good, because I wasn't sure about if the EFK stuff was going to work. Oh, man. Uh, manage, uh, well, plus, uh, import, load. It's not letting me do this. Oh, yeah. So um, this may or may not work, but um, let's pretend this works. Um, <laughs> this is a configuration issue between the default configs between Grafana and Prometheus. Um, but you know, if I were to troubleshoot this, I would do something like, you know, I would do git um, like svc, so get my services within my monitoring namespace. You can kind of see my Prometheus server has this uh, cluster IP. So then um, I, could, I could do something like kubectl um, exec uh, it uh, monitoring. Uh, and so, oh, uh, God. Really? I guess that image doesn't have a shell in it? Let's pretend that didn't happen. We'll move on. Um, um, so the, the, the last thing is I, I, th using um, an operator. So CoreOS has this thing called operators. Um, you can read about that. But we're going to use Helm to install their uh, operator chart. And if this goes to plan, we'll have a, a Elasticsearch, um, FluentD, and Kibana stack where, and it'll pre-configure. It'll add a little log FluentD log. Um, forwarder on each of your nodes in your Kubernetes cluster to forward uh, its log data from the Docker socket into Elasticsearch. And it'll pre-configure Kibana to look at that Elasticsearch cluster so that you can search on it. Um, so then we've added the Coro, um sorry, this is not from Coro, this is from uh, uh, UPMC Enterprises. Um, so we added their Helm repo. And then I'm going to do a Helm install. So now if I get pods and monitoring, 
uh, logging maybe. I have an Elasticsearch operator, which um, it's not literally Elasticsearch. It's just a, some code that knows how to create Elasticsearch when I ask for it. So if I run this, um, and I do get pods, I'm going to see nothing. Namespace logging. Uh, let's, let's see what the logs for this operator say. kubectl uh, logs and logging and that. Um, OK, so th uh, theoretically, it's creating, it didn't find my stateful sets that for Elasticsearch. So the operator is making some API calls to the API server to um, create Elasticsearch. So if I do get stateful set, full set and logging, I should start seeing some stuff. So here are the actual stateful sets. Uh, I would expect to see, oh, here we go. So now we have, um, the operator went through and it created some pods for Elasticsearch and Kibana. And um, if we, as soon as Kibana, Kibana actually it takes forever to start because uh, it's building indexes or something, I don't know what it does, it takes forever. But you kind of see, oh, it might be working. So uh, cube port for, uh, anybody know what port Kibana is on? Cube get SVC. Uh, let's see. Kibana is on uh, it didn't re actually register a service. I think I'm out of time. Um, but uh, yeah, come, come talk to me if you want to actually see this work. I'm sure we can get it working. Um, but if you follow through the GitHub repo, you should have something that's like has basic met metrics, you know, basic logging. Uh, TLS and um, kind of a good place to start your Kubernetes cluster. Cool, thanks.